So we introduced our referees. Uh, well, we went through our um, breakdown priorities all together as a referee group. Um, so that was introduced to referees across the bay. Um, we thought we'd take the opportunity tonight to really drill down as a, as a premier group as well um, to see what it's going to look like and have an opportunity to discuss and, uh, and to, I guess, query anything. No doubt everyone would have seen some super rugby games over the weekend uh, and some certainly different um, penalty counts uh, to what we're normally used to. Um, from a personal perspective, um, I probably enjoy watching those games a lot more than some of the games pre-COVID. Um, just as some of the stuff that was actually being done then just wasn't being pulled up and it is now. So it was quite good from a personal perspective, as a fan at least. Um, but what we'll do, guys, is uh, there are five key areas to the breakdown which we're going to focus on. Um, so I'll go through them one at a time. Um, we will stop after each one just to have a... Yeah, you know, just open it up for a bit of conversation at each one as well, uh, rather than waiting till the end because there might be things that you think of along the way. Um, so we will dive right into it. Unless there's anything that needs to be said or asked at the moment. Oh, cool. All right. See my screen. Two seconds. Okay. So you would have seen through the links that I sent out on the email that. Um, actually, so just bear with me. I've didn't share that quite right. Just need to share your computer sound as well. Okay, there we go. The links that I sent in the email uh, had um, the three different areas. So they had our rugby toolbox, the Australian New Zealand rugby. Um, so they've taken basically what's been shared with the Super Rugby referees uh, and Super Rugby teams uh, and broken it down into some great resource uh, to use at the community game as well. Uh, you would have seen our community game priorities, um, which is a uh, again a, a document that outlines, I guess, with the direction that NZR has for the community game. Um, you note that a, there are actually quite a number of things on there. Um, so while they are all priorities, of course, you know you can prioritise some priorities as well. And so for us, uh, sorting out the breakdown um, has been has been a key message from New Zealand Rugby and World Rugby that that is the number one priority at the moment. Um, so that's why we are targeting that first. Uh, and of course, World Rugby um, law site. So there was the initial uh, law application guideline, which was released in March. Uh, it looked a little something like this. Um, and since then, so about two weeks ago, um, they then released clarification and um, I guess some guide, you know, guidelines and some rationale behind all the decisions. So it looked like it actually was in response to what NZR had put out on the rugby toolbox. Um, it did a similar thing. So if you haven't already had a good look through some of those, um, I'm not going to go through these all of those sites tonight um, because people can do that on their own as well. Um, but I will be using the, uh, the rugby toolbox um, just to go through those five areas. Um, but there are some excellent videos on the World Rugby one as well um, to have a look at. Um, and, and some good... Uh, um, animations as well, particularly when it comes to the gate and entry and uh, whatnot. So be sure to check it out if you haven't already. Okay, so with the breakdown, so again, five key areas. Um, now, the number one area that uh, we've asked to focus on is the role of the tackler. Okay, so we'll, what we'll do is I'll just, I will play some of the videos. They won't play 100% well. I mean, over Zoom, they're not great. However, they will, you will get the picture um, because they do they do pause and they do show uh, things. So I'll use that to discuss as well. So tacklers rolling away. Again, this has always been something that has, has been expected, but this will be the referee's number one priority uh, when dealing with anything. Uh, the reason, uh, particularly in this written in fine print at the bottom there, um, so in order to reward the jackler from their own team, um, the tackler must not roll out of the way to impede a clean out. So they can't, I guess, form, it, form that roadblock you know, for the uh, arriving uh, support players um, coming in to uh, clean out the jackler. Uh, that's really what um, is we, is we want to we wanna tidy up. So that's number one priority is to get them out of the way east to west. So towards the touch lines is where they're going. Um, again, they're taking all responsibility to get out. Again, there will be, again, material effect that the referees will be able to use that it have a real impact on, on the game. However, if there's probably any doubt as to whether there was a material effect or not, 
the chances are with these with these priorities, the, the penalty probably will go against the, the tackler for not getting out of the way. So I'll just uh, play this a couple of these clips. Well, tackler is red, so just keep your eyes on him. Just bear in mind as well that some of these, some of the decisions, don't analyze the decisions on these videos. Oh, so white getting out of the way. That's probably a really clear cut example because they had a good opportunity to get out of the way. Good counter! I know! So just on the tackler, um, was there any any comments or questions either from referees or uh, or anything to add from referees at all um, that we'd like to add in about the about the tackler and the role of the tackler? Yeah, just Cam, one one from me. Watching those things, one almost similar there. Um, on one of those clips is, I guess we're also going to watch the halfback who may tend to stand intentionally in a way to prevent them from rolling away to milk a penalty? Is that something that um, is a potential risk, I guess, and what a referee needs to genuinely look at? Um, is, the, is the tackler generally trying to roll out the way and are any of the ball carrying team um, preventing them from doing that? I don't know what your thoughts are. I can throw it out to the group as well because my thoughts are my thoughts, but yeah. Gaffy, you've usually got comments about these things. Sorry, mate, I had to go and do something, so I missed the question. Oh, it was, uh, John, uh, John was just saying around the, um, the, the role of the halfback as well and, and the, their actions around pinning a tackler in or preventing them from rolling away. Oh, if, the, um, if, uh, if someone's making a genuine attempt for me versus yeah. um, him, if the halfback's milking it and falling all over them and clambering over them, then it's bad luck for the halfback for me. Um, if, it's, uh, if he's genuinely in the way, then genuinely in the way. It's pretty obvious. Yeah. Yeah, so that'll, get, that'll be... You know, I'd probably... You know, and for me as well, uh, from the start of it, like if this is, if they're, we're saying that all the responsibility is on the, the guy to get out, if they, yeah, like you said, if they are making a genuine attempt to get out, and that, that is that is clear and obvious that they are making a genuine attempt. And I think you can start to see in some of those videos what is a genuine attempt and what is just not doing anything as well. Um, then that can be that can be interpreted and read as well by the by the referee. Coaches, are you happy with this or any questions or comments about this at the moment? Right on. Okay, our next uh, our next focus area, um, we then drill into the ball carrier. So uh, I'll just explain some of the language around this as well. So uh, it's, it's phrased that the ball carriers are allowed a dynamic movement um, on the ground um, before they pass or pace, uh, pace or pass, sorry. Um, so I'll start with that bit first. So when we're looking at the words dynamic movement, um, we are looking at our movement in order to present the ball so it's if they fall the wrong way or fall with the ball under them they can move themselves in a position to be able to present the ball and that's that's a dynamic movement that they can make with their body okay well what a dynamic movement movement is not is a roll forward or a crawl along the ground so anything that's going to i guess propel them towards the opposition's goal line like significantly or um put the put a would-be jackler uh, again, take them out of the play by putting them offside or going past them or under their feet. Um, usually, in a, usually happens in a, in a time when you're under pressure or don't have support there is when you see that the most. So yeah, so it's really eliminating those crawls and those rolls forward, uh, getting those out of the game, um, but reiterating that they can, actually, they can actually make a movement to be able to position themselves to present the ball um, once, yeah, once they either place or, pay, uh, place or pass. Now the yeah, so if they are clearly held, they can't yeah they can't crawl forward. If they're not held, however, um, we, we are yeah you know, as as per law they are required to get to their feet uh, if they want to carry on with the ball. Either they they can place or pass it if they're not held, but 
they can't even if they're not held and if they're knocked to the ground they can't keep on crawling forward or anything like that either and um they do need to come to their feet first so i'll just show a couple of examples there um of what we're talking about that one's a probably a classic example made about five meters on the crawl So again, even with this orange player here, uh, so going to ground, um, he is he is held, and then slip, and then it slips out. Um, now this it does say he is tackled, so he can't crawl forward. But even if he, even if he isn't tackled, even if he's just knocked to the ground, he still can't crawl forward. So I'm not too sure why. To be fair, I'm not too sure why they use that word in there. And uh, feel free at, to, uh, any any referee to jump in and maybe add light to that. But for me, um, you can't crawl forward no matter what on the ground. You're off your feet. If it's with the ball, you've got to get to your feet if you want to move with it again. Any comments so, or clarification there? Yeah, so Cam, from a coaching point of view, we'd be uh, shifting towards back to releasing the ball, getting to your feet. If, in that situation, if you're knocked down but you're not held, release the ball, get to your feet quickly, and then go again, like you sort of see some players do. Uh, yep. You know what I mean by that? Oh, that's something that we could probably focus on rather than these crawling actions yeah completely fine again that's so long as none of your supporting players have joined them behind you because otherwise you'd have to retreat behind them first so as long as you are the, if you're the only one there from your team uh, with in that in that breakdown um then that's fine but if your 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 players of that if that ruck forms or, or if that uh they've joined on then you've got to come in from behind sweet Anything to add their team around the ball carrier on the ground? I think from a refereeing point of view, we need to be really um, clear on this because um, yep. if you've got coaches like that who are going to coach their teams to do that, I think mm -hmm. the easy option sometimes is say not held and just sort of play on. But mm -hmm. um, if, if you're going to have teams that are actually going to coach us because this is the way we should be refereeing, mm -hmm. then we need to be strictly enforcing the rules there. And um, if they're going to crawl, it's a penalty. It's um, zero tolerance, I guess. I suppose this probably is one of the more obvious ones to pick out. Like you can clearly see someone that's crawling on the ground. So if we say we're going to penalise it, we'll penalise it. Well, that's the thing, because I mean, crawling along the ground has always been illegal, right? But yep. as a referee, we sort of just put it in the back pocket on this. There's a jackler there ready to uh, go. But what New Zealand rugby are now saying is that's irrelevant now. We need to stamp it out. So we need to be very technical in this area. Just on that, um, I think if your focus is on um, the tackler rolling away immediately and not clinching because we've always been taught to clinch the last couple of years to hold the hold the uh, ball carrier in there. I think if we're hard on that, then you won't find people are crawling or rolling as much because they're going to be free to do a nice long place. Funny how it all has a flow on effect. Nice. Cool. And then I guess that's where those yeah that's where that that order of priority comes in. Deal with the tackler first. And then look at you know the ball carrier, make sure they're not crawling. And then we get to the meaty stuff like the like the jackler and the arriving attackers, which we'll talk about in a sec. All good on that one, guys. Brilliant. All right. Uh, assist tackler. Cool. So this one probably isn't that new. This is always this has been in there or thereabouts for the last few years anyway. Um, but no less uh, no less they've kept it in here. So a clear release of the ball carrier. So this is uh, particularly from a, a assist tackler that either um, sort of it doesn't necessarily go to ground, but might hold the hold the tackle player going to ground. Um, so they have to make sure that they are completely on their feet and supporting their own weight um, before contesting the ball, and that there is a clear release. We don't necessarily need to see the uh, the arms right out or a clap or anything like that. I know that that is a way to prove it, um, but we don't necessarily need to see that. We just need to make sure that there is a there is a clear release of that ball carrier. Um, the uh, and clear separation, I guess, is the other the other part of that too. So I'll just 
my uh, clips here, nice and short and sweet. I'll just go back, they didn't actually pause that one for very long. So seven red has helped with the tackle um, and then they've fallen to ground after they've helped with the tackle. Um, so they're definitely off their feet. So they're better on the ground, but they're leaning completely over the player. Um, and there's definitely no clear release between their arms and the ball. They do get back to their feet, but then they're trying to pull the ball up before that clear release. So that's really what we're looking for with that, uh, that assist tackler. This is a, a, a good example. So, watching him here, play forward, make and tackle, clear release on the feet and straight in over the ball. So, happy with that. Cool. Uh, comments on that, guys? That one's pretty clear cut. Yeah, that has, that has been in the tracks for a while. Okay, we'll dive into the next one, which flows nicely off the back of that one, uh, and that's our jackler. So again, um, so the, the key area in this was to, uh, it's basically who's, who's winning, the, uh, winning the race. So it's no longer, we, we completely eliminate that uh, thought of, survive, of a jackler surviving, surviving a clean-out, which I know has been um, thrown about for the last few years, uh, that they get over the ball, so if they survive the clean-out, then they have rights to it. Uh, in this case, if a jackler legally gets there, wins the race to the ball. Um, they are supporting their weight and can show a lift of the ball or that they are attempting to lift the ball, then they will be reward, rewarded quickly by the referee. Uh, and the reason I say quickly, and you would have seen it probably a few times with Super Rugby as well, is to prevent then if they're sort of struggling to get that ball out, they're obviously quite prone to then getting smoked by someone cleaning out. Um, so the quicker they are rewarded uh, in this instance, then Probably the less you know the less oppor opportunity we have for those i guess dangers that that occur in that area uh so they have again put in put in little asterisks at the bottom there so reiterated the role of the tackler so making sure that the tackler um doesn't help their team's jackler um to impede a cleanup okay so not causing a bit of a roadblock for a, for a, for arriving attackers coming in supporting the um supporting their player on the ground so again, we're looking for supporting of own weights um, and then the lift of the ball. So where we have seen in the, uh, in the past players going over the ball uh, and just putting their hands on it uh, and expecting, I guess, to be rewarded for that, um, you know, trying to buy the penalty in, in a sense, we are wanting to see that they can actually attempt to lift that ball. Uh, and if the player is genuinely holding on, then that's an obvious penalty to, to most referees um, if there is holding on. So um, what we don't want, uh, what will also prove is that they are, it's because if they can lift that ball and they are remaining on their feet, then chances are they are supporting their body weight. Uh, if they just got their hands on the ball, but they're not trying to lift it, there's a good, there's a good chance that they may not be supporting their weight and they are using the ball to help um, support their weight. So... That's what we're looking for by the lift of the ball there. Uh, now, in terms of not getting there first, so if they're not first, that's pretty simple. Um, then this, once they arrive, if they're not first, once they arrive and make contact with someone, then a ruck's formed anyway, so there's no hands. Uh, and the last one there, uh, the, other pass, the, the other bit here is bouncing past the ball or losing their feet. Um, they can't, if they come in too hot or they lose their feet and go over the ball, they can't sort of bounce back and retrieve the ball on the way back past. So they do have to make sure that they are completely on side again before they attempt to have a crack at the ball if, no, if still no one's there. Okay, so they can't just go off their feet and over and then retrieve the ball on their way back to getting back on side or getting their feet back on side. That makes I think sense. it's important to note, Cam, that, that, pe that part of this is about rewarding, isn't about rewarding shit technique but getting lucky. Yeah. It's about you've got to do it properly. Yep. So in particular, you've got to get your jacklers to do your jackal properly. You've got to get your tackler out first so that he doesn't get an unfair advantage at it by obstructing the clean. 
Yep. So you've got to get your, in particular for the coach, get your jacklers jackling correctly and demonstrating it correctly instead of the half ass, half a hand, half on their knees, leaning on a guy's stuff. Yep. Um, they've got to demonstrate the right picture. Cool. cool, guys. I'll just show these clips and then we'll add some more comments in there when we need to. So again, this, is, this comes back to a bit what Gaffy was saying as well, that they're not just, just not doing it right off their feet. He's on the ball. Again, ignore some of the decisions. But this one here is a good example. Okay, so blue over the ball, supporting weight, and then showing a lift of the ball as well. Not that we can see the lift, but yeah. There's a few things going on in this one, so we'll just make sure we focus on actually what, what we should be focusing on. Um, so six black is we're focusing on there first. Um, and 16 black, so the tackler on the ground. It's also important to note that they don't impede the cleaners. Uh, so they're not helping out Jackler. Cool. Uh, and they have pointed out that five came in the side anyway. <laughs> so that's it. That's as it. And that's as an aside. I'd almost argue that why did why did they come in the side is maybe because six, the tackler hadn't rolled it out of the way, but neither here nor there at the moment. Um, so yeah. So on the jackler in terms of that, are we happy with that? Or comments or questions? Are we pretty clear on the, the bouncing, so bouncing past the ball and, and back onto it is not allowed. So once they have actually, if they do lose their feet and they do bounce past it or land on the ground past the, past the ball, they really can't just grab that ball on the way back through, which is what, what we do see sometimes. They do have to make sure they get back on their feet and onside from, 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 their, from their goal line. Cool. Hey, sorry. Um, yeah. Sorry, Cam. With that, uh, if they are not first, there's there was a couple of pictures I saw in the the Landers Chiefs game where um, most teams would have their seven in the in behind the line where the halfback traditionally stands. Mm -hmm. um, it didn't look like it looked like that was working for them a lot, and they got in into that zone. But oh, does that really fit with uh, if they're not in there first? Because there's a lot of traffic around there. I don't think they were ever first, but they were getting paid some of their... Do you remember the pictures I'm talking about? Just to cast my mind back, I did miss half of one of the games with, with, with my girls, but did, did anyone else see the games that can comment on that? Yeah, yeah um, like, I reckon I've got a view on that. Um, um, yeah. Uh, yeah, good question, Pingy. Uh, I, reckon, I reckon he pulled the trigger too quickly on in that game on the um, some of those holding ons, and yeah. was probably a bit generous around allowing that guy to contest, whereas I thought the the Sunday game was a better example of the ref um, dealing to the tackler that wasn't quite getting it right first, and then we didn't have so many as many holding on penalties. So that was that's my view on it. So happy with that, guys. Anything to add there? Good, cool. All right. So the last one is arriving attackers, and this probably has the most um, most moving parts to it. So we'll go through it bit by bit. Uh, so this one here um, is coming through the gate first of all. So, and uh, um, what we're looking for when they are coming through the gate, and I guess one of the triggers that might be for a referee is the direction that the backside's pointing. So chances are, if they if they're entering in a ruck area. Uh, breakdown area um, with their backside pointing towards a touchline, um, there's a good chance that they are um, coming in uh, not from the right angle. So we are looking for their backside to be pointing toward, uh, pointing between their corner flags, so towards their goal line in essence. Um, chances are if they are doing that, then they have squared up to, um, in order for their entry um, coming into a breakdown. Um, so 
after that as well, so once they have actually entered the breakdown area, is not sealing the ball, so not going off their feet to kill it. Uh, I think we all know what sealing is, um, and then going over the ball uh, and eliminating that contest for the ball. Um, we're pretty hot on that. They can, they are able to bind to their own teammate who is on the ground. So if they are over, the, if they are supporting their weight, they can hold on to their teammate who is on the ground, so long as they are in a, uh, they are, are actually showing that they are supporting their weight, uh, and they're not leaning over completely on them like a like a staple or where if you took that took that person away, they would just fall on their face. Um, so that that was made clear to us um, when we went through this together as a referee management group. The other part is the uh, way in which they clean out a jackler. So the um, priority from World Rugby uh, is what they want to see is binding and driving. So grappling a player, I guess, between the thighs and the, and the chest, so in that torso area, um, and, and driving them off the ball, um, rather than diving at their legs. Um, they talked about it as being dangerous play, um, but essentially if you are diving at someone's legs as well, you are going straight up. There's, there's no possible way you can realistically stay on your feet. So um, a, a clean that comes in and then dives at a jackler's legs to, to clean them out um, will be, will be penalised as well. So not looking to attack the legs, but instead looking to hit on the, on the jackler from the thighs to the chest, um, binding on and driving them off the ball is, uh, is, is I guess where World Rugby in particular um, are looking for that contest to be one. Show a couple of clips here and then we'll have a bit of a chat about that too. So this one is uh, diving off feet and no driving, again shoulder tuck. No chance that that person could ever stay on their feet with the direction that they were heading. Ceiling one, so straight, straight to the feet. Oh, so the drive from and another ceiling one here as well. Straight up feet. So he, even, he even grabs a player on the way through. Yep. So again, two from two infringements from that player, blue player there as well coming in. So side entry for starters. So you can see where his backside is pointing uh, towards the touchline. Um, he hasn't entered through the gate. And then he has gone straight for the, the legs, which again only means that he's going straight to ground uh, in, that, in that picture. And there's no chance of, of driving that player off the ball. And just another ceiling one there. Contact. Good. Cool. So we're looking at side entry here. Uh, this is what we saw a bit of getting pinged in the weekend too. Um, so seven in front of us and five who's on the other side pretty much comes from the opposition side as well. Again, neither through the gate, both backsides pointing towards touch lines. Tutu needs some support. And Jonathan Ruru. Comments around those guys. Just a question from me, Cam. Um, hmm. It might be just a matter of language. Um, when you talk about driving players or try, driving the jackal off the ball as opposed to, I guess, taking out the legs, I take it you still have the ability to be able to, I guess, wrap the back and not flip, but take him sideways and take him off the ball as opposed to driving forward. When you say driving forward, I've got the image of like a counter ruck. Um, but uh, yeah, what are your thoughts on that? I take it there's no issues with still grabbing around the back and flipping them off the ball. So grabbing them so from over the so from over the top and Correct. then flipping them off is, is the picture you're looking at? Correct. There's no, there's no issue with cleaning anybody out to the side so long as they've entered the breakdown in the correct way in the first place. Yeah. That's my question because yeah. but the language is must drive the player off the ball. Now that 
I've got the picture. I think, I yeah. think that's just being semantics. You know, the clean out's a clean out. So long as they've yeah. done everything right legally to get in there, that's and they move them out and they move them out of the area. There's no issue. Yeah, I guess I guess the they must. It's not a must drive them off the ball. I think the, um, I probably should have said that. Um, World Rugby want you know want best case scenario most of the time for that driving you know for that driving off the ball. However, what they don't want absolutely don't want is the is the diving at the legs. So that that method of clean out, I guess other methods are still fine. So if you're grabbing around the torso and pulling them out off there, that's that's still fine too. Um, because again, you're not diving at their legs. So I guess that would be the thoughts around that. Unless anyone has any different thoughts. Referees is a group, we're happy with that. So we're just looking out really with those clean outs we're looking. So obviously we're focusing on the entry for, for starters, where they're coming from. And then the method of clean out, all we're really want, looking to rule out and get rid of is the attacking the legs, which is really going straight to ground anyway. That we're pretty happy and clear on that. Cool. Awesome. Well, that's actually it, guys. So those are our um, breakdown priorities. There are, well, there were three other priorities in particular uh, on that on that rugby toolbox site. Um, so a lot, some of it had to do with space. Uh, again, some of that was in front of the kicker, also the offside at the tackle and ruck. Uh, in particular, the offside at the tackle and ruck, um, Super Rugby, they're looking for the players to be clearly onside rather than, you know, rather than, or were they, were they not offside? So, um, yeah, again, we, these will be things that we will start looking at as well. We're going to start with the, with the breakdown. We're going to, as a group, uh, look to nail that. Uh, early as early on as we can. That's only going to do us justice, and I guess our our teams that are playing justice. There's no there's no doubt. There's probably going to be some a few more penalties in the game. I think that that's unavoidable as players get used to it, and referees and and coaching um, methods get used to it as well. Um, but hopefully, again, we can work together to uh, to bring it back to where the direction of the game is heading. Um, coaches, I just wondered if you had any final thoughts on those or, uh, or, any, or any other part of the game that you might want to take an opportunity to discuss while we're all here as well. No, cheers for that, lads. Um, really clear. Um, yeah, thanks for the opportunity to hear where your uh, perspective is. Guys, any referees, any final thoughts as well? Oh, sorry, John. No, that's right. I apologise for my ignorance if this is a dumb question, but just so we take it back to our other club coaches, this is something that's obviously filtering down through the grades, so all referees will be applying these new um, priorities. In the, in the best way that, yes. In the best way that the referee can, yes. Yep, yep, for yep. sure. Okay, cool. I think that's the important part of that, Cam, is that, that mm -hmm. this is a little bit... I mean, this is not new law. This is just mm. actually applying the law correctly. So it actually will take a little bit of bedding in. Yep. Um, and the referees are not going to get everyone. No, um, and they're not going to get everyone perfect as they, as they never do. But I, I think be aware that we're probably going to be going a little bit harder at breakdown and be prepared for to get a change in behaviour, which means maybe more penalties or, or how that's interpreted. But as a whole... Um, it, it should look a bit a little bit different, but it also the flip side of that is is that we're not going to get every single one. So don't don't start, I guess, grizzling that. Gee, you missed a side entry in the thirteenth minute or whatever that is. We're doing well, we're doing our best to get as much as we can. Um, uh, and, but it's still a work in progress for us too. Yeah. Not gonna lie, I refereed an under under fifteens game at Tauranga Boys this afternoon, and just getting getting my own head around it. Apart from the fact that. They were just trying, going in and trying to smash each other as well. Um, no, it was um, it was good to start getting my head around that as well. And the, and I just worked through. I've been up to Tauranga Boys yesterday as well and worked with their some of their rugby players around there. So it was nice to be able to then with those players that I had gone through it with. Hey, remember what we spoke at yesterday? That was yeah, that was straight on the side. So you might got to come through the gate. They understood. So again, if we can reinforce the messages and if coaches you are picking things up. Picking a few penalties up, no doubt you'll take those back to trainings and have conversations with players around actually what was it, why did you get pinged, and where are the trends that are happening here. So, um, again, you know, and like, like Epi said, we'll, we'll do our best to, uh, there'll be a balance that is found somewhere too. So, 
but for now, here's our here's our starting point. So we're pretty excited. We're pretty excited about um, getting on with it and getting on the grass. Well, thanks guys. Unless there's anything else to finish up there, um, what I'll do is I'm going to make this recording available too as well. So I'll email it out. Uh, and if you have other coaches and stuff um, within your clubs, then you feel, feel absolutely free to share this as well. Um, of course, we're having a conversation as a, as a, as a premier group here. However, um, again, like, like we said, we will be applying this as a community. It's a rugby-wide thing, really. So we'll be doing our best to apply it uh, throughout any grade um, and we'll, yeah, we'll share it with uh, the other premier coaches as well so that everyone can be and is on the same page as well cool thanks very much for joining and taking the time uh, tonight really appreciate it um, to our referees as well our volunteers there too I uh, really appreciate the time uh, that you've taken too um, good luck for anyone who's uh, out there on Saturday uh, go well and enjoy and um, yeah we'll see you, see you around the traps <laughs>